What's the one thing that a user is guaranteed to do before they decide to click that add to cart button? They're going to look at the price. Nobody writes a blank check. I'm going to show you how a human sees this page using foveal gaze simulation software. We're calling it StomperNet Scrutinizer. Pretty cool, eh? Anyway, since the user can only see one-tenth of the page, or two degrees of their field of view, when they're looking at the price, they can't see the Add to Cart button with any detail. Now look, if they're really motivated, their eyes will go hunting around. But this costs time, and hunting time is the enemy of conversion. We know, we've tested it, we'll show you. Now look at what happens when we move the Add to Cart button over to this cluster of price and ordering information. Suddenly, our fovea can see the entire detailed message, and right there at the bottom of the stack is our most wanted response, the Add to Cart button. Check this out, just moving this button about 350 pixels to the right on this page created a 25% increase in Add to Cart actions. Grab your notepaper and write this down. The takeaway here is you need to try and understand your visitor's goal. In this case, assume that the user wants to buy the product, they need to know what the price is before they make that buying commitment. That buying commitment is your user clicking on the Add to Cart button. Your goal is to get them to add a product to the cart, because that action represents a mental commitment which can lead to a sale. So the design goal of this page is to get the Add to Cart button in front of the users when it's commitment time. And that means your action item is to make sure that your Add to Cart buttons are adjacent to the price. This is an important concept. It's the main tenant of ClickFoo. Your overall goal when designing your website is to make your user think that getting the information they want is going to be easy. Putting the Add to Cart button right next to the price on your product pages accomplishes that goal. And here's an awesome tip. If the visitor thinks that your website is going to be easy to get around, they'll stay longer. A lot longer. Easy matters a lot. Let's take a look. Here's a chart from a company called SLI Systems. They rock. They provide awesome outsourced search and publish neat data on search behavior. And according to this chart, you can see the increase in clicks on the number 10 listing in their user's search behavior. I'll bet you're surprised to hear this. It's a real head scratcher to most people, but when you start to drill down, you'll quickly understand why this is a biologically predictable result. There are two factors at work. Number one, the final position on a SERP page at Google or elsewhere is easier to read because it has white space surrounding it. Remember we said easy matters? There you go. Number two, the user is evaluating something we call in cognitive psychology a cost function. And by the way, we're getting into black belt level click foo here. You see, the user has arrived at the last search result on the page. All the other results have largely scrolled off the top, and they have a decision to make. Do I click on the number 10 listing and take my chances? Or do I click and go to the next search page, wait for the page to load, reorient to the page, scan to find the first listing, and start my search all over again? And oh yeah, it's page two, so the results are probably going to be less good than the ones on page one. See, they're measuring the cost to them associated with all of these things. They're thinking about the time, the effort, and the energy. They click on position 10. More than next. Easy matters, folks. And easy often wins out over good, or smart, or even better. When I was at Carnegie Mellon, I had the pleasure of working with a, a researcher named Herbert Simon, who got a Nobel Prize for putting forward the concept of satisficing. This means that a person will choose the best available action, even if it means it's just the easiest. It doesn't have to be the most effective. In fact, rational behavior only plays a small role in that decision-making process every once in a while. That's not to say that their choice is irrational. It means that their choices are based upon what they think is best at the given time. Let us show you what easy looks like and how you can apply it on your site. When a visitor arrives on your site, they form an impression. That impression is basically what their experience is going to be should they decide to stick around. This is where they look at your site to tell if it's going to be easy time. Your site template, your navigation bar, your content layout, your typography, and your color scheme. And they do it in a matter of seconds. If your layout is cluttered, and by the way, cluttered may not always mean what you think it means, they will determine that they're in for a lot of effort if they decide to use your site. And since most web users are lazy, if it looks like your website is going to be hard, they take their ball and go to a different playground. Let's start with some low-hanging fruit. This is an easy change that you can make on your site that will take you about 15 minutes. It's one of the changes that I drove across a bunch of StomperNet controlled sites. The key is adding headings to long menu bars. You've probably seen some of these examples before. Or sites like the Tapestry Standard, My Wedding Favors, and Two Cute Baby Gifts. You've already seen them in the first two Going Natural 2 videos on A2 Armory. Here's what the Two Cute Baby Gift navigation bar looked before headings were added. Here's what it looked like after. 
When you look at the after example, you might even feel less stress in your eyes. Here, here it is again, before and after. The headings in the after example act as anchor points to your eyes. These anchor points reduce the number of major saccades, the big eye movements in your nav bar, and it makes them more precise. It's almost like headings have a visually calming effect on your eyes. And the result? A 25% reduction in homepage bounce and an over 10% revenue boost. This is huge, huge. So there are two reasons why this works. Ease of use, people. Who would have ever thought that Fisher Price had it right all along? Now, if they could only make those computers with those big keys. You see, navigation bars are a standard design element across the universe of internets. Most sites have them, which means that your site cannot escape being compared to all of the other sites that the user has been to and remembers in their subconscious. When they're looking at your nav bar, they're calculating. They want to put a label on your site's layout. Here's the general value system. Notice how black and white, how absolute it is. Good versus bad. Easy versus hard. And useful versus worthless. Pretty harsh, huh? You're either good, easy, and useful, or bad, hard, and worthless. Number two, a heading-enabled navigation bar improves their chance of finding what they're looking for. It really does. A better informed customer is a happier customer. Not only does it group or cluster similar products and information into bite-sized or foveal-sized categories, it also creates little visual anchor points that their eyes can jump to if they need to do a quick scan. Let's look at an eye tracking pattern for a test case we did on My Wedding Favors Navbar. In this scenario, we challenge the user to find a gift in the Wine Wedding Favors category. This eye tracking pattern graph tells us where and in what order a user looked at the elements on our page. Look at what people do when there are no headings in the navbar. They're all over the place. They bounce back and forth and back and forth from the navbar to the content. This is pogo sticking. The user is frustrated with the menu and they don't want to use it. They keep hoping that they'll be able to find the content they care about in the page. These users hated the nav bar. The graph shows that they could only stand to look at a few of the category links at a time, and then they looked away. They wanted no part of that long nav. Now, once headings were placed in the long nav bar, the user stuck to that bar like glue. It was like some force of gravity kept their eye in there, and when they clicked to find the information they were looking for, they did it using the nav bar. Here's your takeaway. Your visitors like structure. They like small packages of information, and they will use your nav bar much longer and to greater effect if you group your topics together with navigation bar headings. If you don't have those headings, go add them today. If you do have them, go make sure they make sense. Action item, add headings to your nav bar today. Now, this is an important safety tip. You really want no menu item to be more than seven or so items from the top or bottom. You see, there's a bit of long-standing wisdom called seven plus or minus two. The point is, users demonstrate maximum efficiency when they look at groups of information. In this case, links in your navigation bar. Now, we realize that not all of the people watching this video are going to have e-commerce stores or sell physical products. Many of them might trade in information or run blogs that they monetize in various ways. The point is, yes, there's a way to organize your information, not just your nav bar, on a page that deals with news items, articles, in fact, just about any kind of information you have to show. Let me show you a study we did in the StomperNet Usability Lab that will change the way you think about delivering information to your visitors. For this test, we designed different text layouts. Here's layout number one. Pretty typical, eh? In fact, we're going to call this a bad layout. You're about to see why. During this experiment, the user was asked a question and told that on the next page, one of the four text groupings would have the answer. Their job was to pick the grouping that would answer the question correctly. Let's watch a user interact with number one. Remember, this is the bad layout. See how the eye is making small jittery movements? The user is having trouble finding the right answer because the layout doesn't organize the information very well visually. Remember when we were talking about cost functions when you showed you the, the number 10 position in Google? Well, cost functions are very much at work here. The user is having so much difficulty finding the answer because of the poor layout that they're making some mistakes when they try to answer the question that they were given. All users are impatient, and because the user is constantly doing a cost function calculation in their head while scanning the page, and this layout is so bad, they're often just clicking on their best guess. So what was the result of this bad layout? Not only did the test show that a user was much less accurate finding the right information with the bad layout, it also took them longer to find the right answer. Less accuracy, longer time is a recipe for a frustrated user. Now let's watch how our users interacted with the good layout. Watch this. The user rapidly and effectively bounces from heading to heading, making